glory, glory. Where are we going, Dad? All right. Um, 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, anyone tuning in today, I want to welcome you. God is on the throne and he still has the last say no matter what's going on. Just make sure you're in position. First John chapter 2. In verse 18. Let's speak it, little children. It is the what? Last hours. Anybody really, do, do, do you really realize that we are in the last hours? This is a reality that has to come to pass. We are in the last hours. You know, it, it, it's pretty amazing to where, you know, we're supposed to be living as though actually today is the last day. We plan but every day could be your last day. Amen. And we definitely are in the last hours. Things are happening tremendously according to prophecy. It is unfolding. We are watching it before our eyes. No other generation has ever seen what we are seeing right now. None. Because we are the final generation. Little children, it's the last hour and you've heard that the Antichrist is coming. How many of y'all know the Antichrist is here already? He is. Even now many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Why? Because they got influenced by the Antichrist spirits. But you have a what? An anointing. From the Holy One, and you know all things. I can't express enough the union of maintaining the anointing. And I'm talking about not just maintaining the anointing, but maintaining a level of the anointing where you do know all things. Many people misinterpret the anointing for an emotion. The anointing is power. It is power. And it comes by being baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, and being connected to the river of life. Once there's any disconnect in our life to that arena, the anointing begins to dwindle. It's like a leak in a pool. It slowly goes down. And you have to get refreshed and refilled every time. Because there's a level of connection that you and I need to maintain the level of the anointing so that we can overcome all the obstacles that are about to be released and that are being released now. Because you ain't seen nothing yet. But if we're in the secret place, we're not going to be touched. Amen? But see, we may not be touched physically, but we'll be touched mentally to those who allow it. People are being bombarded in their thoughts. The enemy's trying to get us to touch and agree with the things that he wants us to do. That battle is over thoughts. That's why we have a shirt that says, who told you that? People do not monitor their thoughts enough. And they certainly don't monitor their mouth enough. 
If they'd monitor their thoughts, their mouths would be controlled. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. All things. All things. Everything that pertains to the kingdom of God. Everything that pertains to a righteous decision. Everything that pertains to God's timing. All of these things you will know. If you reach the level of that anointing and maintain it. Amen? Amen. Revelation 12. Glory. You know, I always look at the Word of God is, is a weapon. It's one of the weapons of God. His Word. It's like bullets that goes into a gun. But a little child cannot pull that trigger sometimes because it's too hard if it's a hard trigger. The anointing gives you the strength to pull the strict trigger. See, without the anointing, that's all you're doing is throwing a bag of seeds at the devil. And that ain't hurting him at all. But the level of the anointing that you carry by maintaining that level of connection, the devil fears you. Other than that, you fear him. In Revelation 12, 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Now this is a multidimensional scripture because we know that the devil already has been removed from the third level where God's throne is at. Amen. He dwells in the second level, and he also comes to and fro to the earth, and in the earth, where is one of his offices at also. But there will also be a time when he will be forced from the physical realm, from the spiritual realm, into the physical realm, where all demonic forces will come forth into the physical realm. I pray we won't be here then. <laughs> it's supposed to happen in the second half of Trib, but we won't be here according to the covenant. It says, But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who does what? <clears throat> he deceives the whole world. How does he deceive the whole world? He deceives the whole world by false information. He deceives the whole world by, he's known as the father of lies. So that's how he deceives, he lies. That's why we have fake news. So he actually uses the media to alter and shift, even to change trends. He uses the media to promote tattoos, cutting, piercing, all kinds of things, dress, yeah, gender. Flip a coin and this is who you are today. Heads or tails. <laughs> he uses the media and now he uses the internet ex expressively to infiltrate, to get people to cooperate and come in agreement with what, what he says. See, he takes a little bit of truth but mixes it with 90% lie. 10% truth, 90% lie. And then people bite the bait. And then he begin to serve him, not even knowing they're serving him. In verse 10, so we see that the serpent and his angels were cast out with him. 
Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast out. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. That was the fulfillment of Jesus giving us the formula for victory and stay in position, deny yourself, pick up the cross and fight and follow. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, but woe, W-O-E, without eternity, to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. You must understand that he knows he has a short time right now. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the child, which is known as Israel. But the woman was given two wings of an eagle. Now this woman was known as the body of Christ. The two wings of the eagle were known as Moses and Elijah. It's associated with the rapture. That she sh might what? Fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for time, which is one year, and times two years, and half time, which is three and a half years. From the presence of the serpent. Now you got to remember, who rules this earth? Who's the ruler of this earth? Satan. So if it says to be removed from the presence of the ser serpent, you must be removed from the earth. Amen? So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman or the body. That he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. He's going to try to do everything he can to cause people to miss the rapture. But the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. The rest of her offspring are those who did not fit the requirements of the rapture. It says, who now keep, basically, who now keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The ones that were left were the ones that not maintained the requirement. They became blemished. They became compromised. They became entangled. Is everybody okay? Evil persecution and continuous spiritual fight in all planes of reality is continuous. We are in a continuous fight in all planes of reality. God is always doing a new thing. Everyone say a new thing of strategy and battle, of assembling, of attack and defense. He also sets traps for our enemies if we're obedient. One of the ways he sets a trap for our enemy, it says, when we worship the Lord, he ambushes our enemies. He is doing a new thing right now. He is establishing what I want to call a new order. One of the things that happened in the scripture that we read, it says that the Lord opened the earth and swallowed the flood of the enemy. Those that were obedient to the enemy are rebellious to God. Does everybody understand that? So what he did is he, op he opened the earth to the rebellious that were trying to persecute. And that will happen again. Go to number 16. New order. 
He is establishing a new order. We are in a new order right now. It's a new order of the kingdom. Amen. In verse 1, Now Korah, the son of Ezkar, Ezar, the son of Kohath, and the son of Levi, with Dathan and Abram, the sons of Eliab, and on the son of Peleth, of the sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses. They did what? Go ahead, read it with me. With some of the children of Israel, 250 leaders of the congregation, representatives of the congregation, men of renown. They all rose up against Moses. They gathered together against Moses and Aaron and said to them, You take too much upon yourselves, for all the congregation is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Why then do you exalt yourselves above the assembly of the Lord? Hmm. Well, God heard this conversation in rebellion. Let's go to verse 20 and see what he had to say. <laughs> and the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, he spoke to them and he said, separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. That's what God's response was. <laughs> then they fell on their faces and said, oh God, the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh shall one man sin and you be angry with all the congregation? So the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the congregation saying, get away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abram. Then Moses rose and went to them and the elders of Israel and followed them. And he spoke to the congregation saying, depart, from, depart now from the tents of these wicked men. Touch nothing of theirs, lest you be what? Consumed in all their sins. So they got away from around the tents of uh, Korah, Dathan, and Abram. And Dathan and Abram came out and stood at the door of their tents with their wives, their sons, and their children. And Moses said, By this you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own will. If these men die naturally like all men, or if they are visited by the common fate of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. So Moses was actually setting them up. God wanted to consume them anyways. But they were the rebellious ones. So Moses set basically like a fleece. He said, look, if these guys, if I'm not called to do what I'm called to do, then these guys that are persecuting me and rebelling against me, let them live out a life and die naturally. But he didn't say anything else about killing them because he already knew what God had said. He said, I wanted to consume them. Is everybody okay? Again, verse 29, he says, If these men die naturally like all men, or if they are visited by the common fate of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord creates a new thing, everyone say new thing, and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them, and they go down alive into the pit, then you will understand that these men have rejected the Lord. Now it came to pass as he finished speaking all these words that the ground split apart under them and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households and all the men with curl, with all their goods. So they and all those with them went down alive into the pit. The earth closed over them and they perished from among the assembly. Then all Israel who were around them fled <laughs> At their cry, for they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. And a fire came down out of the Lord, out from the Lord, and consumed the 250 men who were offering incense. <laughs> Again, rebellious against the new order of God will cause 
a very big problem. There is a constant battle right now between the new world order of Satan, which is evil in dictatorship, and the new world order of righteousness and justice, which is of God. That battle is intense. And it is being exposed right now, globally. It is happening before your eyes and my eyes. There is a new order that God is bringing in. Most people don't realize that Jesus is visiting all over the place. Listen, there's no way that even the North Korean dictator, murderer, abuser could change unless it was Jesus. I saw a prophet yesterday giving a message, and he had given a message a while ago. And one of the things he was sharing, he said, the Lord came and took him. <coughs> and this is before anything happened. And he brought him into the future. There's different planes of reality. We're going to talk about that sometime, but visions and dreams and bring us to multiple planes of reality. And he brought him into the future and he actually sat down with Kim Yong Jun, Kim whatever his name is, the North Korean dictator. And he began to tell him what God was wanting to do with him. And he began to weep and cry. And he offered him salvation and redemption. And he woke up. And the next day, there was a meeting between Trump and a North Korean president, dictator. I'm telling you right now, God is trying and doing everything, turning hearts towards him. Remember, before Jesus comes, he will come through the body of Christ first. There will be redemption in all kinds of places that you never thought what could happen. There isn't anyone not worthy of redemption, no matter where they've been. No one. We may, not, we may think, how can God redeem this person of all the stuff, murder, sexual abusers, all kinds of things? How can God redeem them? Because God created them. And he knows that they are just deceived and their wickedness is just a fruit of a presence of evilness. But his desire is that all men be saved. So we will see peace in North Korea and South Korea. We will see denuclearization there because of the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Not because of anything man is doing, but everything God is doing. That's why we must pray for redemption to every leader of every country, nation, continent, and island globally, no matter where or who or what they've done. Because there will be a short period of time that revival will break out, salvation will be granted to the complete earth as much as possible. And then things will begin to change slowly, gradually than rapidly. God desires all man to be saved. So what you are seeing right now is the move of the Spirit of God establishing a new order, His order, pushing back the powers of darkness. You haven't seen all the arrests yet. They will come. You will see the removal of many politicians. You don't even realize, I don't know if you've done any research, but if you've done any research, how many politicians are not uh, going to uh, run again because they've been warned already? How many CEOs have stepped down from their positions because they've been warned already? People don't realize that Guatemala Bay is being filled every single day. People are being brought there every single day, avoiding 
civil court system, putting them in there for the military court system, where the end result can be execution, death. God has given people an opportunity to live and live for him or die. This is where we are at right now with the new order that he's bringing in. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Isaiah 42. Hallelujah. So you think we need to maintain a level of the anointing? Amen. Remember, he's coming back for a blemish-free bride. Blemish-free. Forty-two five. Thus says God, the Lord who created the heavens and the earth and uh, stretched out, stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it, and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you. Everyone say He's called me in righteousness. I will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare, before they spring forth, I what? Tell you them. I tell you them. This is a message for every servant of the Lord to be alert and to walk uprightly in preparation for the new order that God is preparing and establishing right now. The new order will be consistent of removal and replacement, and then repositioning. He's putting his people in place. He's putting his people in place to change the course of history. Isaiah 43 and verse 14. We must be alert, vigilant, ready. Isaiah 43, verse 14, Thus says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I will send to Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives. Now Babylon represents the one world order. Does everybody get it? Satan's global one world order. They will be brought down, down for a period of time. The Chaldeans who rejoice in their ships. Verse 15, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path to the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinguished. They are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people the what? Chosen one, the anointed ones. They shall declare my praise. Wow. This people I have formed for what? Myself. Everyone say, I'm formed for himself. That's powerful. Think about it. God has chosen you, predestined you at this time, pulled us out of darkness to form us for himself. They shall declare my praise. A message 
of a change in order is about to happen. And a greater change. And we are a part of it. That's why he says, be careful. Don't get caught up in all the foolishness of the world. Stay caught up in me, he says. Don't get entangled with all of the goofiness. Don't be worrying about what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, and how you're going to do it. I'll make a way where there seems no. You stay entangled with him. He takes care of it. What's the word said? Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added. See, now you're seeking a new order of him. So that you can flow in that new order with him. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Google, Apple, Twitter, they're all being exposed for their corruption. They are promoters of one world order of Satan. Who do you think started them? Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. There will be regulations soon brought upon them. In fact, some of their CEOs are already being removed. In verse 9, let's speak, but it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him, for those who love him. He says, if you love me, you obey me. Amen. But God has, reve has revealed them to us through his spirit. Everyone say spirit. spirit. Now, wait a minute. Let's go back a little bit. That says that you have an anointing, and anointing tells you all things to come. See, so many times when the word spirit comes up, people are just looking at Holy Spirit, not looking at the anointing. Because the Holy Spirit is the anointing. So when he says it's going to be revealed to all these things will be revealed to us through his spirit, means he's going to be, these will be revealed to us through his anointing that tells us all things. But if you're not leveled up to that anointing, that level of anointing, you don't receive those things. There are different levels of the anointing. Again, the anointing is not about a feeling. It's about a relationship. Yes, the deep things of God. Why? For the Spirit searches all things. Now, didn't we just say that the anointing will tell us all things? Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Or except what? The anointing. Who is the spirit of God? Now, we've received not the spirit of the world, which is the Antichrist spirit. But we used to be, but now we have dominion over him. That we might know all the things that have been freely given to us. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches or manipulates, but what the Holy Spirit teaches or the anointing teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not get it. Can't receive the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Because they're delivered through the anointing. For they are foolishness to them. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Discernment is brought by the anointing. Why? Because then you'll know all things. Now people have common sense discernment. They have worldly discernment. But when it comes to the think, think, deep things of the Spirit of God, there's a different discernment. It's God's timing, events. It's all associated with his prophetic releases. That's a whole nother level. Verse 15. 
But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Why? Because the anointing will judge you. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And who is the mind? What is the mind of Christ? It's the, whole, it's the anointing. Amen? New order of righteousness and justice to those connected to his presence and love and truth will perform the will of his new order that will stretch globally. I'm going to say it again. The new order of righteousness and justice, which is being released right now, is to those connected to his presence. To his love. To his truth. And of course, to his anointing. They will perform the will of his new order that will stretch globally. This is a new order of the Spirit. Does everybody get it? It's a new order of the Spirit. And it's for me and you to partake of it. Hebrews 12. Is everybody okay? Hebrew 12. New order. Woohoo! You know, you think about what's happening right now, what God is um, changing the Supreme Court. He's putting righteousness and justice in there. This guy that's oh, Kavanaugh, I think his name is. He will be put in, and then there'll be a woman that will be put in too of justice and righteousness. Prophetically speaking, righteousness and justice will rule the Supreme Court. That's powerful. You don't think there's an all out war? Oh my gosh. It is phenomenal what's going on behind the scenes where people don't know it. Hebrews 12, verse 18. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burned with fire and to blackness and darkness and tempests and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them anymore for they could not endure what was commanded and if so much as a beast touches the mountain it shall be sh stoned or shot with an arrow and so terrifying was the sight that Moses said I am exceedingly afraid and trembling but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the what? New covenant. The new covenant is a representation of a new order. How many of you know that you may be starting something new, amen? but it hasn't flourished yet. You know, you may start a new job and you're learning it and things are happening. You may build a new house, but you're building it and you're not living in it yet. See, so when Jesus started this new covenant, he knew that we would get to a place now. That everything that had been done, everything that had been prepared, would be for time of season right now to be fulfilled for a new order since the beginning of his new covenant. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. 
See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven? Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he is promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Why? Because he is driving out all old things of order and putting in a new order. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken. That's corruption, evilness, wickedness, all of these things that are displeasing him. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. And only anointing will keep you from being shaken. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, why? Because the kingdom of God is going to be manifested on earth more than it ever has been. Let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. New covenant, new order containing a continuous fight so that we can reach, reach and maintain that third level of the anointing and cooperate with the new order of assembling in the body of Christ on earth. It's happening now. In 2 Corinthians 3. Oh, happy days. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. In verse 1, do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the what? New covenant or the what? New order. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills and the spirit brings life. New order, new covenant with his people, chosen people, to bring a new order on the earth that increasingly is changing. The tablets of stone represent the tablets of old. Amen? If you remember when Moses came down from the mountain from being with God when he was given the Ten Commandments, he threw the first ones. They were broke. Representing a new covenant had to come. Amen? And if you recall, also when Moses was in the wilderness and they were thirsty. See, the tablets represented the word. There'd be a new word with the covenant. And the word would become flesh. <laughs> and when they were in the wilderness and they became thirsty, the Lord told them, strike the rock. Because that was a representation of the old covenant. Then when they became thirsty again at another location, he said, speak to the rock, meaning breath. It would be the ministry of the spirit of the new covenant. But what did Moses do? He was so frustrated because he was influenced by so much anger from all the people grumbling and complaining. He got distracted. He struck the rock. That prevented him from entering the promised land. Because God was no longer promoting that. Does everybody understand that? Acts chapter 1. 
Oh, hallelujah. Starting at verse 1. Let's read it together. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Now, Luke wrote Acts. And um, in this, he was writing to one of his friends who was an attorney, who was Theophilus. And verse 2, uh, of all the things that began both to do, Jesus began to do and to teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he through the Holy Spirit had given what? Commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking all things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So Jesus, after he rose from the dead, hung out for 40 days. And being assembled together with them before he was getting ready to leave, he did what? Is everybody there? He commanded. Everyone say command. Is that a suggestion? No, it's a command. He commanded. Commanded Commanded, commanded. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So he acknowledges the baptism of water, and there's nothing wrong with it, but the, actually that baptism was associated with the baptism of blood, Christ's blood. That's what the baptism of water represents. You're being washed by the blood for a new life. But then there's another baptism. That's a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And there's evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The first one is power, and the second one is tongues, which is gifts. Because when you are empowered and connected to the Father, you speak his language. Verse 6, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in, their own, in his own authority. But you shall receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be what? Witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea. Samaria and to the end of the earth. See, receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a benefit of the new order of Christ. It comes with unlimited power to overcome ungodly influence so that you and I may maintain and enter that new plane of reality. There is a new plane of reality when a person gets baptized in the Holy Spirit. It is totally different. Many refuse to accept the benefit of God's new order in the spirit because they're bound by religious spirits. Well, the baptism isn't for today, this, that, and whatever. There's no such things as tongues, whatever. They are deceived. Jesus never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The reason why they preach that is because they cannot interpret the words of the Spirit, because they don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit called the anointing that tells you what? All things. So they interpret it according to a plane of reality. But there's another, another level plane of reality that is through the anointing, which teaches you and goes beyond other things. Is everybody okay? You and I are baptized into a new order of things by when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 4. Can the Holy Spirit use anyone that's been baptized, not been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yes, he can use a donkey.
Now, the baptism of the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with salvation. If you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, it doesn't mean you can't get saved. Amen? Amen. You get baptized on the way home. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, Let a, a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. But with me is very small thing that I should be judged by you or any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Then each one's praise will come from God. We are to be stewards of the mysteries of God. How can you be a steward of the mystery of God without the anointing? Amen? How many of y'all know that there is deeper things than just what's been written? Even Jesus said I, they, they couldn't put everything in the Word. They couldn't put it all in a, in a book of what He's done in the deeper things. Amen? Again, we are to be stewards of the mysteries of the new order of God, exposing the old world order of Satan's kingdom, the fallen race of angels and demons. In 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2 and verse 1. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is a pro pro propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for who? The whole world. Wow. Now by this we know that we know him if we what? Keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. And by this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to what? Walk just like he walked. Brethren, I write no new co commandment to you, but uh, an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which... You heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because darkness is passing away. Everyone say darkness is passing away. That's what's happening. How can it pass away without being exposed? And the true light is already shining. He who says he is in the light and hates his brothers in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there's no cause for him stumbling in it. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because darkness has blinded his eyes. Ephesians chapter 5. New order. You're either a part of it or you're not. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5. Starting at verse 1. Therefore be what? Imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. In other words, do not approve or promote 
evil order of Satan's kingdom and rule, but expose it. God is trying to warn his people even now. Why? Because we have elections coming, don't we? People don't realize that the Democratic Party promotes wickedness. Even the Libertarian Party does. They don't get it, though. There's only one, one party, and that's Jesus' party. That's called righteousness and justice. Amen? We're to be promoting righteous and voting for righteousness and justice. See, we hear about all of these plans that these politicians and whatever talk about. I want to hear about what's righteous and what's justice. And those that promote righteousness and justice are the ones that we promote and vote for. Why? Because if you vote for anyone else, blood is on your hands. Now, that may be a hard thing to accept. I mean, because I voted for... Yes, because they promote. They are promoters of murderers of children. They are promoters against the will of God, the voice of God, and the promises of covenant of God. You vote for them and promote them, there's blood on your hands. Amen? 2 Thessalonians 2. We're to expose them to maintain and establish a new order. Second Thess. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse nine. The coming in of the lawless one is according to the working of who? Satan. Satan and all power, signs and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth. Who is the love of the truth? Jesus. That they might be what? Saved. Saved. And for this reason, God will send them what? Strong delusion. God will allow individuals, because he doesn't interfere with their will, strong delusion to come. They will continue to grab, go deeper and deeper, and only God can pull them out. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief in the truth. Sanctification in the Spirit means cooperation. You are set apart by cooperation. Without cooperation, you can't be set apart. And belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by epistle. And now may the, our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and good work. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed for your release of your prophetic word that we may know what's going on. We ask, Lord, that you continue to keep us in position, keep us alert, keep us ready. And Lord, keep us anointed, connected to you in Jesus' name.